Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. So-called solar generators or basically large battery banks are all the rage these days. People are using it to travel, to go off grid, put in the back of their RV, or just for emergencies at home. In fact, this is the third such battery bank we're gonna be checking out here on the channel. And I decided to take a little bit of a different approach with this one because look, they're not all created equally. You might be checking out this video and saying, I don't really need one of these things. They're too expensive or hey, I really do want one of these things, but can it power this? Can it power that? We're gonna talk specifics today. We're gonna look exactly what this product can and cannot do. That way you know exactly what to look for if you're in the market for your own solar generator. Stay tuned guys, we're gonna check out a really nice product from the company Vatted. It's a new company, but I think they put out a pretty good product. Thanks for watching guys. Now, as I said, we're making this video really to review this product from the company Vatted, um, and I decided to do a little bit of a different take on it instead of just showing you what this is all about, because I have several different ones and they're all for different things. Now, a couple things up front, this product was given to me for free to review if I chose to review it. They did not specify review, but they did ask me to review it if I thought it was worth reviewing. Now, Vatted has no control over this video. They haven't seen this video. They haven't given me any pointers or any talking points, etc. This is just what I believe is important about the product. Uh, I don't make commercials, I make reviews. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what to look for when you're going to get a solar generator. There are certain things that are very important to consider, overall size, you know, dimensions and weight. Some of these things can get very heavy, especially if you're wanting them to do certain things. You wanna look at power capacity, how much does the battery actually hold? How much will it put out as far as watts, for example, with AC? We'll take a look at that today. That's really gonna limit what you can and can't power with it. You wanna look at charge time. You wanna look at charge inputs. How can you charge these things? There's a lot of different ways to charge them. You just wanna be able to do it in a multitude of ways, especially off grid. And last, you wanna look at the different ways that you can get power out of it. What kind of plug ups do you have? Do you need USB? Do you need USB-C? Do you need just DC? AC, you want to make sure you look at everything that you have in mind for use with that product and make sure that you have the hookups that you need in the product you're looking at. Ultimately, you want to know exactly what you want out of your solar generator. So let's take a look at this one in particular, tell you what it does really, really well and some limitations that it has. So this is the vetted portable solar power station. Like I said, third or fourth one that I try here on the channel. And uh, I like this one quite a bit. Now the dimensions are 7.9 by 5.5 by 8.5. So it's pretty small unit overall. It weighs 10.4 pounds, has a power of 600 watts. The capacity itself is 518 watt hours or 140,000 milliamps. The charge time is pretty impressive. It comes with two options for charging out of the box. It comes with a standard AC adapter that plugs in right there, okay? You also can use this standard 12 volt uh, car adapter that also plugs in right there. Now, if you wanna get the super fast charge time, one of the great things about this is that it will charge from zero to 100% in three and a half hours. Now, the important thing is to do that, you gotta plug in here to AC, and then another AC you plug in right here to this USB-C. So you'll plug into both units right here, both places, and that will charge it. If you just use the one, it'll take about seven hours. I did that, I'll talk about that later on, but you wanna make sure and use both. Couple of details, it does have a very nice carry handle on top. Okay, it's very sturdy, which is nice. It has an LCD screen up here. We'll just turn it on. Very simple operation. Over here, you've got a light in case you want a light, just hold it down. Light will turn on. It doesn't put out a lot of, of power. As you can see, it's drawing one watt. Okay, so this LCD screen is really, really handy. You have two, two options. You have the AC and the DC. This top row up here is all your DC power. This is an input, uh, 1030 volt. You have two 12 volt outputs. You've got an out and an in. So this is a USB-C. It's a 65 out and 60 volts in, okay? That's important, like I said, this will go in or out. These are outputs, USB-C and a USB with 15 watts. Then you have a QC 3.0, which is a higher power USB output. Down here, you've got two AC plugs, very clearly states on here, 
110 volts, 600 watts, so each is 600 watts. And then you have an output here, which is a 12 volt output, which is like for a standard car charger. I'll turn this off and show y'all. This is just a little USB charger for a battery that I have for a light. Plug it in, of course, it's not charging. Okay, you can see nothing's happening. You have to turn it on, so you'll click on the AC, and oh, that's right, it's not AC, right? Turn off the AC, you can have both on at the same time. Click on the DC, and there goes your power. You can see it's charging here. It will tell you um, two, six watts are going out to charge this, roughly. It is a USB-A. We have 73% charge remaining, and they're estimating 54 hours of charge capacity if you only use the six watts. Now, you can add on to that. For example, this is a camera battery, right? We can come right over here and plug this in. We have to turn on our AC because it is a plug. So there it's on and you can see that it turned on. Now we'll go ahead and do one other thing. Let's plug up my laptop and you can see we're using 20, there we go, about 60, 55 to 60 watts out. And now all of a sudden we have seven hours, six hours of charge remaining because this is a much uh, higher watt device, which is the laptop. This is a large, uh, the largest MacBook Pro they make. Granted, it is from 2015, I think. But anyway, that is a super quick look at how easy it is to use this thing. It's nice to be able to turn the AC and DC off. If you leave these on, all right, and this screen is on, no matter what, you're going to be using power. So it's going to drain your power. That's enough looking at this thing. So let's take it outside and talk a little bit more about what makes it different. So let's talk about some things that kind of set this unit apart, I think. First off, it is dead simple to use. I mean, I've had some that they have lots of on-off buttons, and this one has very simple AC, DC, and basically from there you can control everything else. The fast charge time is impressive, and let me tell you guys why you probably want to read the directions. Well, I let it go all the way down to like 1%, and I plugged it up, and I timed it, and it took almost seven hours to completely uh, to completely charge. And I thought, this, this isn't what they said. So I emailed them and I said, listen, why, why do you think it's seven hours? And they're like, <laughs> you have to plug up two different cords. So basically you have two ways to charge it. You have the, the little DC input, which you can hook up to the AC power or you can hook up to a solar charge or something like that. But there's also a USB-C input. The center USB-C is input and output. If you hook both those up, which I did, I completely used it at night to just use my laptop and after about three or four or five nights, I think it finally took it all the way down to almost zero, I think it was 1%, hooked it up, hooked both of them up, and it took three hours and 32 minutes to get to 100%. Read the directions. It is amazingly small and lightweight for what you get. I have not been able to uh, use a solar panel with it to charge it because my solar panels are in storage and I have not been able to find them. But that MPPT technology that we talked about, it really does make a difference. I did a lot of research online and it really allows you to charge much faster with your solar panels. I'll be interested to see, and I might do a later video once I find my solar panels. Uh, I should have went and got them for this trip and tried it, but it's such a mess in the storage unit that I decided not to look for it but it should allow you to charge it much faster on solar, which is something that has been very slow in the past in my experience. You have two pure sine wave AC plugs, which is very important. You want those sine wave adapters that allows the power to be very safe for any of the products that you're hooking up to it. If it doesn't have that sine wave inverter allowing it to be very consistent, you could damage your electronics very easily. It has a 24 month limited warranty. And the price uh, is, is very reasonable for what you're getting. Now, if you look at the link down below, it'll say it's $300 and you'll think, yeah, that's awesome. But come on, Vatted, I mean, come on. $150 shipping, it's 450 bucks. All right, that's what it costs. And that's in line with what you get for a lot of these things. So yeah, it's 450 bucks. These things are not cheap. They're getting cheaper and cheaper. Something similar to this, which can, for example, uh, power a CPAP or a BiPAP at night. I get asked a lot about that because I do do sleep medicine. This would be perfect for it. Should easily uh, power it for, I'd say, probably a couple of nights. You know, two or three, four years ago, a, a battery bank like this was $1,000 or more. So the fact that it's down to four, four $450, it's not too bad. So what is this battery good for? I mean, it's got about 
basically 140,000 milliamps. So for example, your iPhone. My iPhone has a battery that's about 2,560 uh, milliamps or something like that. So 52 or 53 times I could recharge it with one charge with this battery bank. I have a larger MacBook Pro. It's got about a 7,500 milliamp battery. So do the math, that's about 18 full charges for my laptop. You kind of get the idea. However much the battery is, most things these days, you'll see very clearly whether it's a GoPro battery that's like 2,000, 2,200, it would absolutely charge tons of times for the GoPro. You just have to divide out how many milliamps yours is into 144,000. So what is this not for? Now this is really important because you might get it and plug up a coffee maker to it uh, and it doesn't work. Or you're camping and you put a hot plate to it and it airs, it will air. I mean, if you plug it up, it will air. Because look, the AC clearly states that there is a maximum of 600 watts. So if whatever you're using either uses 600 watts or a maximum, it'll have like surges of more, it's going to air this out. I can tell you guys, I've done it just to test it. It's not a problem, it doesn't hurt it. You plug it in, you turn it on, it'll start to go and the watts will go and it'll say ERR, air. In fact, let me show you guys these charts so you can kind of have an idea of what this will and won't do. So if you're looking for some kind of a battery bank that will power the things you want, you want to look at the bottom, you want to look on the little sticker, wherever the AC you know, power plug is, and it's going to give you a watts. It may be total watts, it may be a watts with a surge watts. Anyway, take a look at these lists. So if you're interested, for example, in power tools, uh, contractor appliances, you can look on this list and see that it's very, very limited from the standpoint of what you can power with this unit. Looks like maybe a jigsaw uh, will be the main thing. Uh, you could run an electric fence, uh, maybe a couple of very small garden appliances, but you're not going to be able to run much from the standpoint of power tools. Moving over to RV and camping appliances, you have a little more flexibility here. Uh, you can obviously use light bulbs. You just need to think small. Light bulbs, uh, fan, uh, looking down the list, uh, a shaver, obviously, a blender you can usually run. You can't really run a chest freezer, but you can run a dorm-style refrigerator, uh, electric can opener, slow cooker, which I think is something that we can kind of focus in on. Being able to use a slow cooker is nice in an emergency. Uh, now, one of the negatives is that it's going to drain your battery pretty quickly, probably, but something to think about as far as RV and camping appliances. If you want, just pause the video here and you can take a look at the different items. I would imagine the things most of you are interested in, uh, household appliances, again, you just need to think small household appliances, uh, food processor, rice cooker is nice to be able to use if you need to cook something. A lot of electronics can work because they don't really have surge watts, uh, you know, phones, laptops, monitors, TVs, things like that uh, really can be helpful during an emergency to keep morale up, you know, if you're, if you're just really want to watch a movie or something, you can plug up a, uh, a TV or a DVD player. Uh, even during one of our last outages, we, we hooked up the generator to the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and it worked just fine. Even though we didn't have um, a lot of other things like phones, we were able to use our DSL, which was pretty neat. So again, just uh, pause the, the video here, take a look. The higher uh, watt things you just cannot run with something like this, even like air conditioners and stuff, it's very hard because of those surge watts to run with any kind of a small generator like this. But this one definitely works for small things, which is what it's designed to do. Once again, this unit was sent to me for free. I think Vada did the right thing. They didn't ask me for anything. They said, listen, you've had some experience reviewing these things. You have a decent little audience. Would you present our product to your audience if you feel like it's worth it, which I do, and say what you think about it. Like I told you guys, you will never see a commercial on this channel. There's always good and bad. You know, this particular product, I think the goods are, it does everything that it says it should do. It does it exactly right. The charge time is right. The output is right. The, the, the size seems to be correct as far as how many milliamps it has. In my testing and stuff, it lasts a long time as long as you know exactly what you're using it for. What it's not for is powering high, high watt usage devices. And if you get this thing, and like I said, you plug up a blender to it, one of these big Vitamixes, it's going to shut it down in a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to shut it down in a minute. It's, it's just not designed to do that. But it clearly states that. It's got a 600 watt maximum. If you exceed it, it's not going to work. I think this is the perfect 
solar generator for a YouTuber, for somebody like me. I go on trips, I wanna keep things charged. Most of the things, whether it be flashlights, uh, lighting out in the field, I can plug up LED lights to this thing. It's got two different plugs, so I can plug in both my LED lights that I use on set if I want to, for example. I can keep all my GoPro batteries, my phone batteries, uh, camera batteries, all these things are relatively low watt. They, they, they're hardly any watts coming out, so it'll easily take care of charging them, and it charges them over time. And with 140,000 milliamps, I can charge these things for days and days and days. If you want a product like this for these parameters, something that is not to run these big watt things. Once again, go back to a couple minutes, look at those charts and say, is what I want to run on this chart and will it be covered by how much output this particular product puts out? If it does, I cannot recommend it enough. It works extremely well. I also really like the size. It is, it is so much, you know, I did one in the past, I reviewed one in the past, it was much smaller and didn't have nearly the power. And then I did one that was much bigger. Now, it can run a lot more stuff. I think its maximum watts was like 1,000 or 1,200 watts. It was $600 machines. It was much more expensive, but it is able to do that. If you're looking for something specific, make sure you know what you need. Understand a little bit about the electronics, about the electrical requirements, the watts, all those things. You don't need to know a lot. You just need to know kind of one number. What's the maximum that your AC outlet will put out in watts? And what are you using and how many watts does it take? If you know that, you'll be able to make sure that you pick the right solar generator for you. Like I said, I think this thing's very much worth it. I think that the $300 price tag with the $150 shipping is a little bit, hmm, you know, come on. But even at $450, if you compare it to a lot of other products from larger companies, Goal Zero, Jackery, it's right in that range. And one of the things that those companies don't have, or at least only their high-end models at this point have, is that rapid charging. Going from zero to 100% in three and a half hours is huge. I'll make sure and leave links down below to this product if you're interested. There's no affiliate links or anything like that. Um, it's just if you wanna find out more information about it. I shouldn't say that. There'll probably be an affiliate link for Amazon, but not to the company. It's just my regular affiliate link. Anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. Do me a big favor, guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up down below. Really helps spread things across YouTube. I know this is a little bit different, but I am trying to expand what we do here on the channel just a little bit to include more self-reliance, and this is a product that I think really fits in with that. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button, and if you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that notification bell. You will be the first to know. I thought it would be kind of nice to take a look at a solar generator, review one, then kind of use that to show you guys exactly what you can do with this one and what you can't do with it so that you know going in, if I'm gonna spend this money, this is what I wanted to do. I wanna make sure you guys spend your money wisely and the products that you buy live up to your expectations. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.